Yeah, how are you doing guys? I'm 905. Uh, so I finished overclocking my system and uh, was wondering how does it stack up to the stock system. So for the stock system, I will load uh, BIOS defaults and activate only XMPI profile uh, for the memory. And uh, since my 1070 Strix comes pre-overclocked from the factory, I'm going to use that profile, which is a GPU boost of uh, 1860 and memory clock uh, of 8000. And for the overclocked settings, I'm going to use the Derbauer BIOS settings. I'll link to that video in the description. And we'll sync all cores to 5.2 gigahertz. Uh, we'll increase the core cache ratio to 4500. Uh, the system boots all the way up to 4900, uh, but it does require voltage increase. And I just can't cool it with my Ryu 240. So 4500. Uh, is the safest max I can go. The same thing goes with the base clock. Yeah, it stays default as increases require increase in voltage. Next up the RAM. Um, the majority actually of the time tuning the system I spent trying to get uh, some improvement out of the RAM but uh, at the end I came to conclusion that uh, 4000 CL17 at 1.35 volts uh, is the best it can do. It can do 4100 on CL17 or the 3900 with CL16, but uh, both of these uh, specs require 1.45 volts. And I just don't want to run that uh, for 24 7 builds since uh, the improvements on the Intel system is not that spectacular. Uh, I'd rather stay on 4000 with uh, 1.35 volts and uh, since I'm not running those settings on day-to-day -day basis I'm not gonna uh, do that in the video as well. Um, I managed to overclock the graphics card slightly more to 1900 on GPU and 8400 on the memory clock. And the last part of the tuning was to manually lower the system agent voltages and the VCCIO as left on auto, both of them ran at about 1.3 volts. Uh, first, I lowered the VCCIO voltage to 1.05 and then the system agent voltage to 1.1. And not only am I far more comfortable to run these settings on a day to day basis, uh, also the maximum temperature during the prime torture test dropped. Uh, first, lowering the VCCIO, uh, it dropped from 92 degrees to 89. And after lowering the system agent voltage, it dropped another 2 degrees to 87 degrees Celsius. Uh, test used was the custom preset 12x12 with the FFTs running in place. To stress test the system for stability, I did uh, 6 hours of ADA64, 6 hours of OCCT, uh, 6 hours of prime, small FFTs, 4 hours of real bench, and also, after I dropped the VCCIO voltage, I did a three hours of prime custom test to confirm the stability. And then when I dropped the system agent voltage, I did another three hours of prime test. So, so it should be stable. And for the temperatures, you can check the graph below. And uh, also I'd like to note that maximum temperature that I've seen on Apex 11 um, VRMs uh, reached uh, 67 degrees during the prime load and uh, that's the maximum I've seen. Uh, Alright, uh, that's pretty much all. Uh, let's start the tests. We will start with some syn synthetic workloads and then advance the gameplay. Uh, since I have only 1070, all these tests will be done in 1080p, Full HD, with max settings. And uh, I would like to start off with Cinebench, and basically this this graph alone explains why I chose to go with 9700K. I don't care about multi-threaded uh, score, as I don't do any renders. I might do a video or two occasionally, but the single purpose of this system is gaming. And so I basically look only at the single core speeds or the instructions per clock and overclock to 5.2 gigahertz it gives me 227 which is which is just insane uh, and uh, ryzen doesn't even come close to that and i don't think the new ryzen's come close to that as well and if you want to buy 9900k uh, 
good luck in trying to cool that at 5.2 gigahertz. So for me, the 9700K was the sweet spot. Also for the testing, I tried uh, to do the single core runs on, on 5.3 and 5.4 gigahertz. So basically I went into the BIOS, uh, bumped up all the voltages, increased the RAM speed to 4100 and also increase the core cache ratio to uh, 4900 so these are the scores uh, 5.3 gigahertz give me 232 and 5.4 gave me 235 single bench score um, i doubt that even with the best of the cooling solutions i will be able to do 5.4 but at 1.4 volts, when I upgrade my cooling system, I should be able to do 5.3 with 4900 um, core cache ratio. That's pretty much how I wanted to mention in this video. I'll, I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the benchmarks, some more synthetic loads, a few of the games with built-in benchmarks. Just to advise that uh, the gaming score is not going to increase that much since I'm heavily limited by the GTX 1070 and um, the GPU is running at 100% all of the time. But I'm not going to upgrade my GTX 1070 this year or this generation to be exact. I'm waiting for the next generation and then I'll see. Uh, first I want the Navi to drop from AMD. Uh, I want to see what Intel is doing with a new GPU segment and uh, then I want to see how the Nvidia's new 7 nanometer graphics cards look like before I buy a new graphics card. So yeah, that's basically all. Thanks for checking out my video. I'll see you in the next one. Six right, one hundred, three left, one fifty, two left, extra long, tightens.